Hey, welcome into Shop Fix. In this episode, I want to show you how you can replace a large section of damaged drywall ceiling. In this video, I'm going to go into detail on how to prep the repair, make the cut in the drywall, and replace it with the new drywall. So although this video is focusing specifically on the cutting and replacing of the drywall, after mudding and painting the ceiling, this is what the final repair looked like. Shop Fix, your free online source for everything DIY. All right, so let's get started here with step number one, which is securing any loose wires or boards. I had this large white wire that was hanging down past the ceiling joist, so I needed to secure it with some staples. Now, when you start your repair, you might not have as large of a gap that I'm working with here. I had such bad water damage that that whole area pretty much just fell out of the ceiling. And then I did some rough cuts around it uh, just to get a perimeter real fast. In step number two, we're going to be removing all the leftover nails from the drywall and any unwanted materials that we don't want in a repair. In the third step, we'll be measuring and cutting the opening for the new drywall. For much smaller openings in your ceiling, you could cut the drywall first, place it on the ceiling, and then just use that as a template of where you're going to cut. However, this repair is so large that I'm going to need to actually mark out the perimeter first, and I'm going to make sure that it's exactly square so that when I cut the drywall, I can just cut it a perfect rectangle, and it's going to fit in the ceiling perfectly. If you're using this method, you'll want to make sure that you have perfect 90 degree angles in your corners, and make sure your lines are straight with the joists. I'll be utilizing a razor blade to cut most of the drywall, however, a drywall saw just like this would also be a great option. When cutting the existing drywall, I would just make sure that you take your time and cut exactly on the line so that your new drywall fits in really great. Another good reason why you might want to cut the existing drywall before cutting the new drywall to measure it out, because you might not know which parts of the ceiling are still structurally intact until you start cutting. One good thing to note here is that you don't have to make the cut in the existing drywall along a ceiling joist because we can use furring strips to basically create a platform for the new drywall to be screwed onto. And so keep that in mind when you're making this existing drywall cut. The main goal here is simply to remove all the damaged drywall so that your edge is structurally sound. With precise measuring and careful cuts, we can get a perfect rectangle for our new drywall. Before we can move on to anything else, in step four, we're gonna securely attach the existing drywall to the joists. You don't have to get too carried away about putting screws everywhere. However, you wanna make sure that you have screws all the way around the perimeter, through the drywall, and into the ceiling joist, so that the whole perimeter of the drywall where you cut, that whole edge is securely mounted. Because oftentimes, it will be hanging down. Mine was hanging down quite a bit, so I had to raise it up by using drywall screws. In the fifth step, we'll be mounting the furring strips on top of the drywall. Now, these specific boards aren't quite as narrow as furring strips. However, I needed to make a little bit larger of material for the drywall to hang onto because it's such a large patch. And essentially, all you have to do is make it a couple more inches past your drywall so that you can simply mount it with drywall screws. The boards that I use for the furring strips are half inch in thickness. When I'm screwing in these drywall screws, you'll oftentimes see me check the screws placement with my thumb, and basically I'm just making sure that there's enough gap to place drywall mud. We're going to go ahead and repeat that process in the same manner on the other side of our repair. One thing to note here is that furring strips only need to be placed parallel to the ceiling joist. There's no need to create any furring strips on the perpendicular side of the ceiling joist because the ceiling joists are already present on the very edge of the perpendicular sides. And when mounting them to the drywall, you want to actually hold down the furring strip on top of the drywall. Otherwise, your drywall screw will push up the furring strip and then you won't get a secure attachment. So here's how a repair is looking after all of the initial steps. If one of your furring strips is hanging lower than the ceiling joist, you can raise it up by screwing in a two x four on the edge of the furring strip and it'll lift it up to match it and then you can drive screws in on the side of the ceiling joist. In the sixth step, we're gonna be measuring and cutting out our new drywall. And one thing you'll also wanna measure is the thickness of the drywall because there are various thicknesses and you'll wanna make sure to match that correctly. You'll wanna transfer on the width measurement that you measured from the ceiling and then mark it alongside your drywall. 
With your measurements marked on the drywall, then you can take a straight edge and draw a line straight through all your points. Then you'll want to take a razor blade to score your marked line and then cut the drywall. Then we'll use that same process to measure and mark the length of our new drywall. Then we'll take a straight edge to mark that line all the way across our drywall so we can score it with a razor blade and cut it out. In the seventh step, we're gonna be taking our new drywall that we just cut out and mounting it onto the ceiling. To enable one hand to be free to drive in drywall screws, you can mount a drywall strip along one edge and it'll help you hold the drywall up so you can drive in drywall screws. Now with the new drywall partially attached to the ceiling, we can use two hands to drive in one and a half inch screws all the way around the drywall along the ceiling joist. With all the drywall screws mounted to the other side, now we can rip off that drywall that was acting as support for the left side. And we'll continue that process by mounting one and a half inch drywall screws along the left side ceiling joist. Make sure when you're screwing in these drywall screws that you're sinking them into the drywall a bit so that a layer of mud can go on top of them. Well, after mounting a few more drywall screws to the middle joist, we'll be all complete with replacing the drywall on this damaged ceiling. By prepping the existing drywall correctly and replacing this large sheet of new drywall, I was able to get a nice final result after some mudding and a lot of painting. If you're getting ready to replace drywall in a large section of damaged drywall ceiling, I really hope this video came in handy. And if it did, don't forget to smash that like button. And if this is your first time checking out the ShopFix channel, consider subscribing today.